So I wanted to sit down with this rule book, some minis, and some model kits, and answer the question, just what the heck is sludge? Jay here, and this is the first video in a new series where I ask the question, just what the heck is, blank, and then I fill in that blank with a different game at each installment. Just so you know, this video is not a paid video, and I'm doing it of my own accord. No one asked me to do this video, but I'm doing it because I want to. So today I'm talking about the Sludge Miniature War Game by Sean Sutter. I chose Sludge as the first video in this series because both Dee and I have now made videos about Sludge. This video will present a more in-depth description of what it is, what it's about, and how to get into playing Sludge. Sean Sutter was already an accomplished artist and game designer when he released Sludge. He is also known for his miniature skirmish game Relic Blade and his artwork and miniature sculpting that goes with the game. While Sean designed Relic Blade as a 30mm campaign-driven skirmish miniatures slash RPG game with brighter and more comic book-like art, Sean has taken a decidedly darker approach to world building with the Sludge Miniatures game. Sludge first appeared in the miniature gaming anthology magazine Blaster in 2021. Blaster Volume 3 had the core Sludge rules along with unit rules. Blaster Volume 4 expanded on the units and background of Sludge by adding four factions and rules for units that only those factions could take. Sludge is a 28mm miniatures wargame which is more on the historical 28mm scale than the Games Workshop historic 28mm scale. But I'll talk a bit more about the game rules, the miniatures, and hobby aspect of Sludge after I dive into the lore. The lore of Sludge begins with its setting, and as the Sludge webpage itself says, it's the ancient conception of Yggdrasil, the world tree, mashed through the imagination of Dante's Inferno. The idea that the world tree, Yggdrasil, is built upon arcane magic, and that the forces in the world began to greedily lust for power through the use of magic, and that they have broken the world tree because of their overuse and abuse of that magical power. That abuse is represented on the battlefield by sorcerers and arcanists and other fantastical units. The technology of Sludge is decidedly black powder. The units available in army construction could contain muskets or bows or crossbows, or just as likely rifles or pole weapons. You could see units of medieval knights and cavalry, or you could have units from a feudal Japan setting. There are also land crawlers and gliders, which are powered more by magic than gas or steam. Since the background supports such an interesting array of ideas, such as airships and giants, giant bird riding cavalry and heavily armed knights, the possibility for modeling up the armies is virtually unlimited. As Sean himself says on the Sludge's website, Sludge is an invitation to collect and convert an army from a dark, ahistorical setting. He has created both physical miniatures you can buy and STL files that you can also buy and download and print on your own 3D printer. There are also physical and STL kits with just heads of each faction, so you can just buy those and print those and add them onto other miniatures of your choice. But even though he encourages using historical miniatures to convert up your own army, which is exactly what both Dee and myself have done, I highly recommend that you purchase the models and STL files that he has created. So now that we've talked background and modeling, let's talk about what playing a game of Sludge is like. This is a miniatures game which would be considered more of a skirmish scale if you are used to playing historical war games, but definitely more of a company sized war game if you are used to playing skirmish scale games like Necromunda. You may not be playing with the same amount of miniatures or on the same size board as Warhammer 40,000, but you will have more minis than if you played a combat patrol game of 40k. Most games of Sludge are played on a 4x4 board, with only the largest of games using a 6x4 board. Most standard size games will take between 45 minutes and 3 hours. I've found the time it takes to play a game greatly depends on how familiar you are with the rules of the game and the stats of the units and weapons in the game. It's very much like any miniatures war game, the more you play, the more you remember, and the faster the games go. 
In Sludge, unlike in Warhammer 40,000, you activate one unit and it does its thing, and then your opponent activates a unit and it does its thing. Sludge is more similar to Necromunda with its alternating activations and rolling for initiative. It also has an order system, which is basically the same idea as Necromunda's actions, except in Sludge you get three orders per unit and orders are either long or short. Short orders take up one order slot and long orders take up two. For example, moving is a short order, so you could move three times, or move once and then do a long order, like combat, which is basically making a shooting or close combat attack. Orders are basically you as the commander of the army, telling a unit to do one of the basic orders available to every unit or one of that unit's specific orders it can carry out. Or orders are made by character units telling other units to do something by casting spells, blessing them, or just issuing commands. These things are not necessarily new or unique, but what is new and unique is the gore token mechanic and the stress that those gore tokens impose on other units, both friend and foe. Whenever a unit takes damage and fails their save, that many gore tokens are placed on the battlefield by the damaged unit's commander in base with that unit. These gore tokens remain on the battlefield at the spot that that player decides to put them. Gore tokens impact every unit that is near them, and force nerve checks that can impose stress tokens onto any unit that fails the nerve test. Stress tokens then pile up on units until they start losing members of that unit to stress. Both gore and stress can be removed, but a player must dedicate resources to do so. So if gore is left on the battlefield, it can make large swaths of the battlefield very dangerous to venture into. A savvy commander can take advantage of the placement of gore tokens and can take advantage of units with too much stress tokens as well. Both gore and stress, combined with the alternating activations, force both players to constantly adjust to a changing battlefield, and that changing battlefield, added onto the tactics of a tabletop miniatures wargame, makes for a unique experience. In the main sludge core rules, there are rules for the majority of units available to all sludge armies. In the supplement Sludge Nations, there are rules for units specific to four different factions. The core rules contain the rules for your commander, line infantry, cavalry, skirmishers, foot knights, artillery, and other various units that any sludge army can field. These are the most important units in the game to understand, and will probably make up the backbone of any sludge army. There are four factions in the Sludge Nations supplement, the Imperial, the Royalist, the Free People, and the Cult Factions. These four factions add new faction-specific units to the game. The units these factions add are things like tanks and giants, large icons and gliders, in addition to variations on the already existing units like line infantry, skirmishers, and characters. Creating an army is fairly simple. You just need to start with a commander, which is a free unit, and then the only other restriction is you can only have one elite unit per line infantry unit. There are no other restrictions. This means you could have an all cavalry force, or an all skirmishing force, or an all line infantry force. You could have multiple tanks with line infantry marching alongside of them, or rocket batteries and cannons raining down hell on your opponent. The possibilities for army construction are really vast. You could build your own army based off of one faction, and then face someone else with the same faction, and they could both be very different armies in how they look and how they act on the battlefield. The way minis are based in this game is somewhat up to the players, but there are some general guidelines. In the unit entries, they do describe what bases they should be mounted on. For example, line infantry should have three models per 40mm round base. Skirmishers and character models should be on 25mm round bases. And cavalry is usually one model per 40mm base, but sometimes two models per 40mm base. In the beginning of the rules, it does say that you can change how they're based as long as it makes sense to you and your opponent. The bases that have multiple models on them still count as a single figure as far as the game rules are concerned. As far as terrain, Black Sight Studios has worked with Sean Sutter to create some fantastic laser-cut MDF terrain. They sell an entire 4x4 boards worth of terrain, with a large beautiful windmill as its centerpiece in one kit available on their website, which I have linked in the description below. Other terrain that is mentioned in the rules consists of hills and redoubts, barriers, mires, and swamps, forests and thickets, and exposed great roots. I think the terrain for Sludge can be anything from Warhammer Fantasy Battle-esque to Swampy Wasteland. I think having some hills or redoubts is a good idea, as well as some forests and building ruins. 
Those building ruins could look medieval, or from the 17 or 1800s, could be fantasy. They could even be almost early 20th century, really. Most terrain that isn't obviously sci-fi would work just fine. Originally, the rules were available in Blaster Volume 3 and 4, uh, which I showed pictures of earlier in the video, uh, but now they're rather hard to come by. The fastest and cheapest way to get the rules is to actually go to the website and download uh, both the core rules and the Sludge Nation rules as PDFs. If you go to DriveThruRPG's website, you can also order a soft cover print-on-demand rulebook, which contains both the core rules and the nation's expansion. This is what I did, and I really think it was worth it. The quality of the book is very high, and I recommend that is how you get the rules. Links are in the description below. The models that Sean Sutter has sculpted are also available to buy from Sludge's website, either as actual minis he'll ship out to you, or as STL files you can download and print on your 3D printer. I'll have links below as well to buy these miniatures. Other options for minis are either buying heads for the different factions from Sean and then using historicals to build your army, or you just build your army completely from historicals and model kits. If you're new to the world of historical miniatures or have only been exposed to a few miniature companies, then I suggest you check out Perry Miniatures, Warlord Games, Victrix, War Games Atlantic, North Star Miniatures, and War Games Foundry, just to name a few. So I hope that this video has encouraged you to check out Sludge and uh, give it a try and to go online and look up the miniatures and look up some battle reports. Again, I was not paid to do this video, nor did anyone ask me to do this video. Um, I did this of my own accord and I wanted to review a new game for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, we'll be doing more videos on Sludge in the future, but of course we'll also continue to do our normal Necromunda coverage. I will be doing more videos in this series, exploring different games, including Silver Bayonet, which will probably be my next video. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe.